Hey everybody, it's Chris Clark with DiscGolf.Law. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about patents and trademarks. Um, these are areas of law that we deal in here at our law firm on a regular basis. And we found that there's a lot of confusion among people trying to really understand what are these types of law and what exactly do they protect. And it's starting to come up more and more in disc golf and the work that we do with our clients and just sort of observing the industry. Uh, we've been a little surprised at the extent to which disc golf related companies and professional disc golfers have done really a poor job in legally protecting their valuable brands, whether it is the name of their company, the name of a product that they have, such as a disc, the name of a type of service that they have, um, or, you know, for players, you know, a lot of players have these great logos. Some of them kind of look confusingly similar to one another and could potentially be a problem down the road if they don't take the appropriate steps to protect that valuable brand initially. So let's talk for a minute about MVP. MVP is one of the exceptions to what I've said previously that a lot of disc golf companies have done a poor job of intellectual property protection. MVP has secured a patent for the overmold on their disc. So if you're not familiar with what that overmold looks like, um, it is essentially the ring around the outer edge of an MVP disc. And if you have seen MVP discs, if you've thrown them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now you might be thinking, hey, flying discs had rings around the outside edge long before MVP came along. And a requirement to get a patent is that it has to be unique and it has to be novel or has to be, has to be new. Um, how are they able to get a patent on this overmold, this ring around the outside? The patent that MVP got has a fairly narrow scope of protection because the patent is all about the density of the overmold in comparison to the flight plate. It has very specific criteria that must be met in order to fall within the claims of this patent. So sometimes people hear that MVP has a patent on the overmold that goes on the outside of their disc, and therefore no other disc companies can use an overmold on the outside of that disc. Um, and that's great for MVP. They would probably love it if people thought that. But take a look around. There's lots of other manufacturers making discs that have that overmold ring on the outside. In order for MVP to prevail in a patent infringement lawsuit, they would have to prove that the products from these other companies fall within the scope of those claims in their patent. If the overmold doesn't meet the qualifications that are recited there in the claims of MVP's patent, these other companies are welcome to create overmold discs themselves and there's not really much MVP can do about it. So shifting over to the trademark side, MVP has also gotten a trademark registration for the term gyro, G-Y-R-O, as it applies to certain products that are recited in their trademark registration. Trademark only applies to the goods or services that are recited in the trademark registration. It doesn't mean that MVP has the exclusive right to use the term gyro for all products and all services. In this case, it is limited to the specific products that are recited in their trademark registration. And you can imagine what those are. Sporting goods, namely disc golf discs, disc golf spinners, spinning fidget toys, disc golf lanyards, specifically for holding disc golf disc bags. They've buttoned up their legal protection in the field where they operate. But again, it is limited to the items recited in that trademark registration or other products or services that would be confusingly similar to the ones recited in their trademark registration. Let me just level set a little bit and describe to you in hopefully fairly simple terms uh, a little bit about patents and trademarks. So first, patent. What is a patent? So a patent protects inventions. It is a form of legal protection where you submit an application to the Patent and Trademark Office 
It is reviewed by an examiner. It's quite a lengthy process. It's also a highly technical process. Um, but if you're successful, ultimately at the end of this process, you will be issued a patent. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of people think that it means that they have invented something and they've gone out and gotten a patent on it. And now they can manufacture that thing to the exclusion of everyone else. And that they have the legal right to make this invention that they have and nobody else has that right. It's not quite correct. The best way that I can explain it is this. In each patent, there is a section called the claims. And the claims in a patent describe what exactly is covered by that patent. So for example, you could invent a very complicated invention and seek to get really thorough patent protection on it and come to find out that you have adequately described in the claims section certain elements and features of this invention, but the elements and features of that invention that are not mentioned in the claims, those are not protected. Those are not covered. Similarly, if your claims involve, for example, certain measurements or certain quantifiable criteria, something has to be within a certain range to be protected by this patent, for example. Well, yeah, you can exclude others from practicing that invention within those parameters, but you can't exclude them from going outside those parameters. A patent protects inventions but the protection is only as good as what is claimed in the patent. And that's really important. Okay, shift gears over to trademarks. What do trademarks protect? Well, in common terms, trademarks typically protect brands. And what we understand to be brand names are words and also, I guess, logos that go along with those words. Words and designs can be protected under trademark law. There's a few other things that can too, but the most common are words and logos. And so as long as you are using a particular word or design or combination of things to identify yourself as the source of a particular type of goods or services, you should be able to secure trademark protection for that. So Simple example, if you're a professional disc golfer and you've got a logo and you market your services, your services are identified by that logo, or in the case of this, even your products are identified by that logo, then you should be able to seek trademark protection for it. You have to make sure that the name or logo that you're using isn't already in use in a field that is identical to or similar to the one that you are operating in. You don't want it to be confusingly similar to something else that's already out there. And again, this is a complicated and nuanced area of law. And so I'm not gonna try to give you a course on intellectual property today because you just can't in this format, but just trying to give you some general knowledge so that you can understand what's going on we're, we're talking you know, patents that protect inventions. We're talking trademarks that protect uh, your brand identity. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding and clarity around the differences between patents and trademarks and how those things are important in business in general and how they're becoming more and more important in disc golf.